that. <laughs> Hi, it's Mike with Utastic. I'm here at GoToConf 2015, and I'm standing here with Gail Tenney, who just gave a talk on fast, faster Java objects and is going to be doing a workshop on application responsiveness and as well as a case study. So you're pretty busy here at the conference, but uh, I got a little bit of time to speak with you, and I really appreciate that. Uh, so let's start with the, the talk you just gave about faster Java objects. What, what was that about? Well, it's about faster Java. Oh, oh well, um, well, uh, yeah. Um, the the talk really focuses on a on a project that we've been working on, an open source project from Wikimacon for a year and a half or so. Uh, we are actually hoping for this to mature and get into OpenJDK, into the standard Java mm -hmm. SE nine or ten, some version. Uh, and the purpose of it is to actually allow Java to have faster objects and array mm -hmm. in a way that matches C for speed for the same things. Okay. Uh, so uh, it's actually removing what I believe is the last inherent speed difference between Java and C on speed. Oh, really? There are it, lots it, of other speed differences that could be, but they're not inherent. This yeah. is inherent. Is this, is this addressing the, the startup pro warm-up problem, or is it more of um, the JVM is, is running and it's warmed up and these just allocations It's actually are not a warm-up or a compilation related thing. It's actually memory layout. Okay. Um, so there's there are certain constructs that are natural to use in C and end up being laid out in memory in a way that is either optimal to access in a streaming fashion mm -hmm. or quick to get to a random location in them, where in Java, doing the exact same semantic mm -hmm. thing requires dereferencing through multiple hops and accessing more randomly than, than, than in, a, than in an ordered, sequential. predictable manner, which means that actual access on real hardware ends up being slower for the same semantic structure. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking to close the gap for every one of the common ways you do it in C to have a common natural way to do it in Java for any type of Java object you already have, but in a way that gives you fast access to them. And from what I understand, you have a reference implementation, or the uh, the Azul has its own VM version. That does it? Is that have these optimizations already in there? So Azul makes multiple JVMs. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is called Zing. It's it's a JVM with better metrics, like who's you know uh, eliminates garbage collection, has much better latency characteristics, uh, faster for some things, um, and we also make Zulu, which is basically vanilla OpenJDK. We are probably the best binary distribution for OpenJDK because we're probably the only one for several platforms, okay. Macs and Windows. Neither one of those object layout is not specific to Azul. Mm -hmm. We will certainly put it in our products once the project is there and adopted. Um, and w I would expect Zing, for example, to optimize it well. Right. We're obviously doing it to make sure that it is the case. But we will be demonstrating the speed benefit mm -hmm. of object layout based objects on both Zing and OpenJDK proof of concept implementations. Our goal is to actually have this be part of the standard Java, part of OpenJDK, part of any but he's JDK in the future. But the uh, the VMs that you're talking about, the Zulu and um, the Zen, uh, are those uh, something that I could install on my Linux distribution and run you know, Java code against, or is it bespoke for your infrastructure? I mean, how, like, how do you just the JDK. Install Zing is Linux only, but any Linux. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, you just install it on Linux and run your existing Java code, zero changes to it. Mm -hmm. You know, you turn it on, and five minutes later, you have a better JVM. Um, or one minute later. Um, with Zulu, it's it's beyond just Linux. Mm -hmm. It's on Linux, on Mac, on Windows. In fact, we are the only binary you can get today for Mac or Windows that is OpenJDK. You can get the Oracle JVM. It's a good JVM. Right. If you want the open source one, we're it. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I, I mean, as somebody who's a, more of a casual <laughs> JVM user, I use it mostly to power a JRuby app or or um, some closure code. But you're saying that I could look and, and evaluate, like, maybe I could develop against Zen, or I'm sorry, Zing. this is Zing, Zing. Zing. Uh, mm -hmm. Develop against Zing and also go to production with Zing? I mean, is that is at that level? You could do that, but because it is so interchangeable, you don't need to develop to it. There are no new APIs in it. There's there's nothing you do to write for Zing. Okay. Well, it just I, I just runs Java meant, code. Yeah, I, I mostly just yeah. didn't mean that it wasn't production ready. I just yeah. was... Is there is there extra hooks, profiler hooks, or things that I'd be able to use? So Zing does have some a lot of nice features. Mm -hmm. None of them are language changes or spec changes. They're just it. 
it, you know, where normally people have a hard time dealing with a lot of objects or high allocation rates or, you know, people think that multiple gigabytes is a big number, Zing runs at exactly the same responsiveness level whether you're at a gigabyte or a terabyte or any number in the middle. It can handle 20 gigabytes a second of allocation or 20 megabytes a second. Both of those are a thousand X ranges. Mm -hmm. And it's really the quality where it has this extreme smooth operating range. You don't have to worry about things like garbage collection and, and hiccups and stalls and de-optimizations hurting you. Um, it's built to eliminate the hiccups. It's built to be fast all the time rather than fast and go out to lunch and come back from lunch and go fast yeah. again. Um, which unfortunately is how Java's behaved for the last 20 yeah. years. Um, Zulu is vanilla. I call it vanilla. Okay. Know, it's, it's exactly the way the regular Oracle JVM behaves, mm -hmm. or OpenJK. It is OpenJK. It is no different. We build it. We give it to people for free. We certify it. We test it. And we give it away for free. For Zulu, we sell enterprise support. We support uh, vendors who want to embed a JD, JVM or JDK in mm -hmm. their products, like a router or an ATM machine or just a piece of software that wants a JDK inside. Mm -hmm. Zulu is a natural fit there, too. But it's exactly the same. Both of our JVMs are drop-in identical, the same as you just get a different version of a JVM from Oracle, we get one from us, you can have all of them together and choose per application which one you want to use, and you should expect no functional behavior difference between them. Obviously with Sing, we hope you'll get better metrics, right. mostly around lower noise, jitter, hiccups, stalls, whatever it is that bothers you, and the ability to smoothly run large things without worrying about yeah. them. But, and it, it, it drives me a little nuts to hear that like there's the reference implementation that's that's Oracle, and it it you'd expect a multi-billion-dollar corporation to have the the mm -hmm. reference implementation that's perfectly optimized. But working looking at a smaller company, obviously smaller than Oracle, um, okay. it's, yeah. it's, it's like it, it, I mean, my brain wants to say there's got to be some trade-off. Well, so let me correct you on one thing. The reference implementation for Java is OpenJDK, oh, okay. not Oracle. There's okay. only one reference implementation. It's OpenJDK. That is where Java is developed, defined, and productized. Oh, okay. People then take that and build other JDKs from, either directly open source from it or closed source derivatives of it through the Oracle licensing schemes. And Oracle JDK is a closed source version of OpenJDK um, with some added tooling, for example, and other things. So is Zing. So is the IBM JDK. So yeah. is everybody else's. Um, then uh, Zulu is actually open JDK and nothing more. Mm -hmm. Exactly it. And that's where it's the closest thing to an open source distribution of the bits. Oh, uh, open JDK is just source code. Red Hat, by the way, also makes a very good binary build of open JDK. But I would say that between Red Hat and Azul, that's where you can get you know trusted open JDK builds. Mm -hmm. Somebody actually tested them to see that they're right. You didn't build it from yeah. source and hope. Um, because it's a delicate process. We run the 70,000 plus TCK tests. We run through QA stuff we've been doing for 10 years. And when we're good and happy with it, then we put it up and say, that binary with that checksum is certified compatible. It's fascinating. Yeah. So when we're talking about OpenJDK, really what we're talking about is a source code that represents that reference implementation, Precise. not the binary that I install um, as, as an end user of the, of the VM. Sure. But I would look at um, uh, Zulu or Oracle or, or, or IBM or Zing mm -hmm. or the Red Hat Ice-T. Yeah. They're, they're plug-in interchangeable, should be, mm -hmm. because that's what the Java spec is all about. Mm -hmm. You should not have to be changing your code when you switch the runtime. Interesting. And Java is actually pretty good at that. It's been very well policed to do that. And I think we're, as a community, we've mm -hmm. done a great job. Oracle and Sun before it did a great job at this. It's one of the things that make Java so successful. Yeah, fascinating. Yeah. yeah. And, and how about uh, Dalvik? I, as I understand, Dalvik is kind of its own flavor of, of, of Java. <laughs> yeah, you're putting me in a controversial oh, environment. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so Dalvik, Dalvik doesn't call itself Java. Mm -hmm. It better not. <laughs> um, Unfortunately, you write to it in exactly the Java stuff, but not exactly the Java mm -hmm. stuff. So Java is, Dalvik is a fork of Java. You can okay. think of it that way. Um, you're building in what looks like Java. You're using Java IDs, Java libraries, but it's not quite Java. Mm -hmm. For example, not everything works. Right. And in well, reverse, you take from Java Dalvik from and it won't work on a, on a JDK, and you take from a JDK, like something that runs a Java, it might not work on Dalvik. Some things do, some things don't. Mm -hmm. Reflection. 
no. you know, yeah. um, and, 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 and various other things. So unfortunately in the Delvic world, there is no spec or no mm-hmm. good spec that is similar to Java. And, but we can't argue that Delvic's not popular. It's right. extremely popular for sort of user interface embedded devices mm-hmm. and, and, and such. And, and it's very successful there. I think that, you know, the world has spoken. Right. I think it's unfortunate that it's a fork and that it doesn't do the entire spec. Uh, but, you know, that's yeah. not for me to do anything yeah. about. Yeah. Well, that sounds like they are focusing on a specific vertical of, of a certain type of device, not general purpose. Where they, and also to be able to tune it for those devices. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to me. It's fascinating. So, OpenJDK is just code. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Thank you. Absolutely.